Okay. So Ephesians 5:18. It, it says, do not get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery. Instead, be filled with spirit. With the spirit. And so that verse means to continually be being filled. I was sharing recently that it's like our lives are like this cup. And so I put coffee in here this morning. Which I'm enjoying as we speak. And when I empty the cup out, I'm going to go get more and fill my cup up again. Imagine if our lives only could be filled with Holy Spirit one time. And that would be all that we have for the rest of our lives, just one time. So then what happens when we have poured out all that we have? We have to come back to God and get refilled, right? And so we should be we should be being filled continually, and we can do that throughout the day no matter what we're doing. That's wonderful news. Because the God of all things is wanting to fill our lives with himself. I'm going to um, read a scripture in Philippians chapter 3. And this is actually my life verse. Okay, chapter 3, verse 10 in the Amplified Version. Okay, so David, are you going to just interpret what I'm saying now? Of course. Okay. For my determined purpose is that I may know him. Oh, is in verse 10? Uh, yeah, verse 10 in the Amplified Version. Um, do you want me just to read the verse and then you can read it in the Amplified Version? Oh, I, I just want to know, is that chapter 3? Am I right? Yes, chapter 3, verse 10. Philippians 3, verse 10. Yes. I'm about that solution. Okay. Now, please tell me again. Would you please tell me again in Amplified? I'm sorry. That's okay. You want me just to read the verse and then you're going to read it to them? Yes. Okay. For, for my determined purpose is that I may know him, that I may progressively become more deeply and intimately acquainted with him. Oh. Perceiving and recognizing. Oh my gosh. Yes. Hello? Hello? Are you there, David? Oh, yes. Uh, I'm, yeah, I'm sorry for the internet connection. Hey, yeah. okay. Yeah. Yes. I'm still recording. It's the recording. So, yeah, okay. I will, I will read it. So again. just, you know, I'm sorry for the... Okay, just read that verse, Dave. I'm about to read it. 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 I'm about to read it
Okay, so we can know we, we can know God intimately. He can be our best friend. And remember, I said that Yes. Are I'm, you there, David? Yes. I'm, okay. I, can I tell you okay. the translation difference to the people to explain? Yeah, in the Bahamis. Yes. No, yes. Can I say my mobile? Can I say my mobile? ကဲ့တဲ့စက်တက်မှာပါပါတယ်ဆိုရင်ပူတော်ဒီဘာလဲအသေခံတော့မူကြီးနေဒီနာဒီဟဲ့အသေခံထုတ်သခင်ကို
เนี่ยนี่มีเมียนี่เป็นอะไรเหรอพวกเอาท่าเราพวกเอาท่าเราพวกเอาคุยอะไรสุยคุยอ่ะพวกเอาเล่าคุยอะไรไหนอ่ะเจนเชื่อตัวไปไหมอ่ะอ่านอะไรบุกเอาเนี่ยเจนมาเจอทุกอย่างไหนอ่ะเจนคุยอะไรล่ะไม่ใช่ผมว่ากลิ๊กลิ๊กเจนนั่นแหละอ่ะ I'm sorry yeah yeah uh, uh, Reverend David you are muted This is called perseverance. Yes. Uh, yeah, now I'm changing to a new line. <laughs> I hope it works. I'm changing to a new connection. The other. Oh. Oh. Yeah, so look at how I'm going to do it. Are you still there? Yes. Okay. So it's fine. I'm okay if you're. Oh my gosh. Okay, it's okay. Um, so did you hear what I said? I'm okay if you're okay. Yes, yes, you're okay. okay. I'm sorry too, and this this doesn't used to happen. I'm That's okay. That's okay. And uh, let's just stop for one moment, if we can. Let's just pray into that for two seconds, David. Is that all right? Yes. Yes. Let's. Yeah. Let's okay. pray. I'm gonna pray, and you, you, you pray after me. Well, Father God, in the name of Jesus. We speak to the airwaves across this world. I send the host of heaven, and we take authority over every power and principality right now, trying to disrupt the service. I'm telling you to stop in Jesus' name. Now, Father, we thank you for a clear connection for the remainder of the service. And we're not nervous. We're going to press on and get through. The blood of Jesus covers the airwaves now. In Jesus' name. Amen. See, we have to take authority over the enemy throughout the day. He's jealous of us, and he tries to disrupt our lives. Just like he's trying to disrupt the service. But we will not be distracted. Because our focus is on Jesus Christ. Right? Amen. Okay, so I'm trying to remember where I was, David. Yes. Um, basically, thank you, Father. Just you know, that's why the disruption's not good because then we lose our lose our place. But we'll get back on track. So it's God's will that we know Him intimately. How many of you have heard of a general named John G. Lake? Do they know who that is? No, they don't know. I know. Okay. Don't. Yeah, a few, a few. Know. Okay, he was a mighty man of God. Who had a tremendous healing ministry. And I read something that he said one time, and it bears repeating. Okay, he said, Jesus never intended Christians to be an imitation. They were to be bone of his bone, blood of his blood, 
Flesh of his flesh, soul of his soul, and spirit of his spirit. And so that is the will of God. That is the plan of God. It always has been the plan of God. That we may know him in a very close and intimate way. The The very word intimacy, if you break it down, split it apart, it says into me see. So not only does God want us to see who he is and know him intimately, he wants to see into our hearts as well. The Bible says that we've been adopted. That we are his very own. And many times when I think about the word adoption, I was talking to David about this. The word adoption, when we think in our terms, am I going too too long, David? No, no, no. Okay. When we talk about adoption and we think of that, I think sometimes people will see a child who has not had a parent. Or at least a parent that lives with them. And so, so they may have pity or compassion on a child and say, we'll adopt the child, we'll take the child home with us. Even though it's not flesh of their flesh or bone of their bone, soul of their soul. But much more than that, God has taken us as his very own because we've been made in his likeness. He is our father. We are spirit of God's spirit because we have Holy Spirit residing within us. And so this so this is the plan of God that we be very connected to him, not far off. And so when people think of God as being, you know, I'm, here's where I was a minute ago, that I want you to be my God, but I don't know that I believe you can be my father. Does that make sense? Do you understand? Okay, so when people are praying, if they feel that God is far off, just like if we didn't have the computers connected right now and I'm calling you or talking to David, he can't hear me because I'm far, far away. But because of technology, we're able to actually be in different parts of the world and yet in the same room at the same time. And it's because we have a connection. So, so our connection to God is Holy Spirit and Jesus Christ. 
We were once far, far away from God, separated from Him. There was no connection. Even though God could see us, we could not see Him. But when he opens the eyes of our heart that we understand we can come to the knowledge of him through Jesus Christ. And we've, and we've been redeemed. We've been, then we can come boldly before the throne of grace at any time. Because we're connected through Holy Spirit. Amen. That's exciting. Okay, so we can come to him at any time, any time, day or night. Romans 10 8 says that God is the word and he is near us. He is in our mouth and in our heart. He is part of us. And he is for us and not against us. I would also like to look at Psalm 139 this morning. I love this. Uh, I love Psalm 139 because, because it talks about how carefully he crafted us, how he made us. Okay. Just even the first verse says, Oh Lord, you've searched me and you know me. And so, just that verse, let's talk about that verse for just one moment. If the Bible says that he has searched us and he knows us, that means he is carefully looking at our lives. Do any of you have children? Okay, so, okay. okay, and the rest of us have animals, right? So we know, like, I don't have children, but I have a cat. David doesn't have a child, but he has Richard. <laughs> and so we learn the personality of those that we love, whether they're animals or children. Okay, so um, how many have nephews and nieces? Do, does anybody there have a nephew or a niece? Okay, me too. And so when they were so when they were babies, we would spend a lot of time just looking at them, though they couldn't talk back to us, right? And they didn't know us. But they know your voice. The same is true with us. When we are baby Christians, we don't know God. 
But we know his voice. And just like so just like when a baby that we're holding is crying and we hold them and we comfort them, then they calm down because they know our voice. The same is true with our walk with God. The Holy Spirit is our comforter. And so if something is not going right with us during any given day, then the Lord can search us. He can look for what is wrong inside of us that we may not know because he knows us. He knows everything about us. And yet we are led to believe he's far, far away. He's very distant. Because that is a lie that the devil tells us. Even within, I would encourage you to read Psalm 139 today. Because it talks about how God knows even when we sit and when we rise. He does perceive our thoughts from afar. He knows what we're thinking about. And he watches and he discerns our going out and our coming in. Do you know he knows what we're going he knows what I'm about to say before I say it? And that is amazing to me that he knows every word that I'm going to say before I say it. As I said, I had a plan when I started this morning. But as I'm flowing with Holy Spirit this morning, that plan is being changed a little bit as we go and we walk together this morning. And so he knows exactly what's about to be said. He knows that we're here to be with him and to glorify him. We were created for God's pleasure. And he loves us unconditionally. And so um, I want to read one other verse, and then I'm going to talk about a picture that the Lord gave me. Psalm 139, verse 13 says, For you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I, pra I praise you because I'm wonderfully and fearfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. And then it goes on to say, my frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place. When I was woven together in the depths of the earth, your eyes saw my unformed body. 
Do you remember that we talked about that a few moments ago, about being unformed? We were formless and void before God's spirit came to live within us. And so uh, the next verse says, all the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. And then ending with verse 17, how precious to me or toward me are your thoughts, O oh God. How vast is the sum of them? Were I to, if I were to count them, they would outnumber the grains of sand. And that is how much God thinks about us. I once did a study on, um, I was doing a study about the stars, the planets, the galaxies. And there was a gentleman, a very, very smart guy. And he was talking about how vast the stars are, how many there are. And he said, if we took every grain of sand on every sea in the whole world and put them together, it still would not outnumber that there's more planets and more stars than there are grains of sand on the planet of Earth. So think, so think about that for a moment. If, if God thinks about you so much that it outnumbers the grain of sand on the seas, that means he is mindful of us. He thinks about us every second of the day. Because he loves us that much. And so what I call the book of ordination is about our lives. Because He's ordained all of our days before one of them came to be. And so he has things for us to do every day with him. For remember, we were created for his pleasure to know him. And he wants to know you. He doesn't want you to think he's far, far away or hard to hear from. You know, it's how we, it's our perception of God is how we hear his voice. And so if we believe in our heart that he's far, far away, hard to get to, then that's the way we're going to hear his voice. We're going to have a hard time hearing from him. 
because we think he cannot hear us. And yet the word is clear that he thinks about us all the time. That verse that says that um, his thoughts, precious are his thoughts toward us. In other words, he's thinking about us all the time. Just like we would think of our family members, the babies that we love so very much, or our moms and our dads. Our very best friend, our closest friends. How many of you think about your friend, your close friends throughout the day? Or your family members, or you know, something that you love. The same is true with God. He thinks about us all day long, every day. Because he desires to walk with us. You see, the Garden of Eden was where he put man, he put Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden to walk with him every day. It was a beautiful place. And now we are like that garden. We have been, uh, the Lord has implanted himself in us like the garden of God. And he wants to walk with us every day, all day long. He has wonderful things he wants to say to us every single day. And then we get what we're supposed to be doing for every day by spending time with him, as I've been talking about. You see, we never have to leave the presence of the Lord. The Bible says we might grieve Holy Spirit, but he will not leave us. That's a wonderful promise we have from our Father in Heaven. When he says, never will I leave you or forsake you, but I will be with you for all time. Because I've redeemed you, you are mine. And so do you know this very, uh, do you know the love of God in that way? And we can, we can know him in that way. We are, we don't have to be orphans or have an orphan spirit about us. We can know God and he can know us. I told you about a picture that the Lord had given me this week. And I was so touched by this, I started to cry. Because I experienced this when I was a missionary with children in other nations. The children that I worked with were very impoverished. They were poor. They didn't have any self-worth. And they just survived every day. So as uh, my team would go to minister to the children, I can remember embracing a child and pulling them close to me wanting to express the love of God to this child. 
But the child did not embrace me back. It had its arms just down by its side. Right. And so I took the child in, but it just didn't respond. But as I began to pour love out on the child, then it became, it's like life came into the child and it was free then to embrace me back. It didn't happen right away. But as I spent time with the child and it got to know me, it was open. It was open not only to receiving my love, but showing love to me by embracing me back. So as God brought that picture back to my mind, I was feeling how his heart must break because a large part of the body of Christ in the earth is the same way with him. And they, they want him to be God. I want you to be my God. I want to serve you. But I don't know how to let you be my father. Because I feel like an orphan. Instead of the truth, which is that I really do belong to you, Father. And so as we meditate on his word, which says all of our days were ordained by him before one came to be. Then that becomes alive in us. He, he is the word that becomes alive in us. The part of the uh, meaning of ordination means to fill the hand. And so, in a way, every day is a gift from God that He fills our hand with. And He gives us things to do. The first and most important thing we do is express our love and appreciation to Him every morning. We, and so he's given us a day and we tithe that day back to the Lord. We give that day back to the Lord. That we might receive his instruction and do what he would have us do during the day. Just as we follow Jesus, right? And so Jesus is our greatest example in relationship with the Father. Jesus even said, I only do what I see the Father doing and I only say what I hear the Father saying. And he goes on to say, if you follow me, um, let me see if I can find the scripture real quick. Yeah. Jesus said that if we if we walk with him as he is in the light, that we will not that we won't walk in darkness. He he said, I am the light of the world. And so if we want our path to be lit up and easy to walk on, easy to see where we're walking, 
We need only follow after the Lord with all of our hearts. You know, the Bible says that Jesus, or uh, Father God rather, is looking to and fro throughout the whole earth to find out whose hearts are completely his. Can you, can you say that your heart is completely his this morning or this afternoon? I want my heart to be completely his. How about you? Do you desire to know the Lord in this way? And do you desire for God to know you in the same way? Yes, of course. We want to know him as, much, as close as we possibly can. And he wants to know us in that way. He says that all of our days were ordained before one came to be. We don't know how many days we have. And there's another scripture that talks about how we should, um, we should number our days, that we walk right with God. The, the scripture talks about we're walking circumspectly with the Lord because our days are numbered. And so that just means really holding ourselves accountable to do what, to make every moment count. As believers in Jesus Christ, we, we know that our name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life, right? And so I believe when we get to heaven, there is a book that's going to be written about our lives contained within the book of life. Imagine all of our names being written in the Lamb's book of life. And, and so next to my name, there's a chapter within that big book. I feel God's presence while I'm talking about this. And so I pray that you're feeling his presence now come, because I'm feeling him begin to rest upon me. So every one of us, our life is a chapter in time. And so we want to be sure that every page within that chapter is good. Pleasing to the Lord. Wow, feel him. I feel him so strong right now. And so every day that we come before him, we give, the, like he gives us the day, but we give it back to him. And we say, it belongs to you, Lord. Since he never leaves us or forsakes us, then we only need to be aware that he is with, that we can feel him. He is with us all the time. We just need to be aware that we're in his presence all the time. Yeah. 
And we can walk closely with the Lord every single second of our lives. Doing the most simple thing that he would ask us to do. It may be that you find somebody that comes across your path during the day that just needs to be encouraged. And so we pay them a compliment, perhaps. And as they get to know us, then we have the freedom to speak into their lives. Of course, I'm speaking more of our co-workers or our neighbors, maybe. And they watch us to see what our lives are like because we profess to be Christians. So what does the Bible say about that? How are they going to know that we're born again? How do they know that I'm really a Christian? Jesus himself said they will know that you are Christians by your love for one another. So first we love the Lord with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength. And then we love our neighbors as we love ourselves. So God has ordained every day that we walk in love. Not just our own love, not the phileo love, but the agapeo love is what it's called, agape. We walk in the love of God. Because we're walking in God every step. And so at any moment, if we stay in that place, being aware of his presence, then just like a good friend of ours that's very close to us might whisper something to us, they can speak softly to us and we hear their voice and we do what we know will make them happy. How much more can we do this with God our Father? He, can, he talks to us in a still small voice. He doesn't have to yell at us because he's right with us. In fact, he doesn't yell at us. He never yells at me. But oftentimes he just, he says, Debbie, I love you. Or whatever your name is, he speaks your name. He calls you by your name. And says, I love you. I want to know you. And I want you to know me. I want you to walk with me, closely walk with me. Do you know nothing can separate us from his love? There's a verse in the epistles that says, life or death, angels or principalities, um, nothing can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. That's such, that is such a wonderful promise that we have. And just the same, God says, I'm for you. I am not against you. 
And so we can live our lives every single day with that knowledge. Not just in our head, but in our heart. We can experience walking with him very closely every single moment of our lives. And so God would say to us today, I am your beginning and I am your end. We've heard him say, I'm the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. And so our lives is contained in God. Like a book. Like a book. The cover, we are covered by God. You see this? He's the, front, he, he's the front cover and he's the back cover. And everything within the book is about our lives with God. That's such a neat illustration from Holy Spirit right there. And so I don't want my life to be one tiny little page. No. no, I don't want this to be my life in God. I want this to be my life in God. Yeah, the whole, I want it to be full of God. And so the plan of God, going back to that, the plan of God is that we know him and that we let him know us. In the days that he's ordained for us, we can do exactly what he wants us to do. One of these days, we are all going to be in heaven together. As believers in the Lord Jesus Christ, that is. And we will be there eternally forever, never having to be separated by time or anything. There may even be a time that we sit down and say, remember that day that we spent together in church? And I remember you telling me, Debbie, that God had a plan for my life. And that plan is that we know one another closely, that I can know him and he can know me. And so I did the will of God in my life, and I'm so glad I did. So I've said all of that to say this. It's not that we do so much for God. We, we do have things that we need to do in the Lord, that's for sure. But, but more importantly, he wants us to be who he's called us to be in him. The Bible says that we live and we move and we have our being in him. We live, we move. We live, we move, and we have our being in him. 
The Bible also says that apart from him we can do nothing. And so Holy Spirit is our vital connection to Father God. Listen, we can know him in our heart. Experience. We can practice the presence of the Lord. And that's where it begins. We, we spend time with him and then it grows and it grows and it grows. And so the plan of God is that we know him. And that's what he has ordained for every single day of our lives. And when we stand before God and he opens the book of life, and he opens up the chapter of your life, He's going to review page by page what we did with our lives. You see, every day has already been written down in his book. And it's up to us to do what he says every single day. That's what we want to live to do, right? As I read earlier in Philippians, my determined purpose is that I may know him. That I may know his person, the wonders of his person. That I may know him personally. See, I don't have to know God based on how David knows God. Or how you know God. Or what someone else says about how they know God. No, I can say I know my Redeemer. I know him well, and he knows me. So how many of you, we'll close with this, how many of you would like to have a closer relationship with God, the Father? Not that he just be distant and hard to hear from, but that he could be so close to me, I can hear his voice very easily. Do you desire that in your heart today? Yes, of course. And guess what? We can have it because he's given us the desires of our heart. Does that make sense to you? Yeah. And so we can know as I get closer to him, I have desires in my heart, but God begins to give me desires. He puts desires within me to know him all the more. Amen. Amen. So let's pray. Father, thank you for this time we've had together. We desire to know you in the most intimate way. And for you to know us intimately, Lord, that we will carry out your plan and your purpose in our lives every single day that you give us. 
I thank you for this day, Lord. Which you have given to me. And now I give myself to you. That I might do that I might do what you want me to do with this day. Which begins with walking closely with you. Listening for your voice. And then obeying what you ask me to do. In the name of Jesus. I bless my friends now in your name. And I pray this for them because they said they desire it as well. That they know you with all their heart. That they not just have a head knowledge of you, but they really experience your presence, Father God. Every, every single day and every single second of every day. I bless them in the name of Jesus this morning. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Thank you for letting me be. Thank you for letting me come and be with you today. You're very welcome. And so we thank you so much. Uh, thank you, David. God bless you, brother. Yes. So did you notice, I just want to ask this question. Did you notice that we had no more interference after we prayed? Yes. Uh, yes. A good lesson to learn that we have authority in the name of Jesus. We don't have to be distracted in our lives. And most important is we don't have to be disconnected from our Father in heaven. That's good news. Hallelujah. Amen. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, All right. Do you have anything else you want to say, David? Or what, what do we do next? No, it's okay. I, I just want to say thank you so much. Oh, you're welcome. God bless you so much. Hey, uh, tell them this. I, I love this brother. He's like my son. Uh, David is like my son. Yeah, we went. We've been in school together. He was my classmate, but now he's become my brother. You know, I tomorrow a temple reward and the master degree of it. He says, I don't do that. I mean, I could not do that. Oh, no, my way. Yeah, and so we might have physical miles that separate us. Because I'm on one side of the world and you're on the other. But we're connected in the spirit because there's no distance or time in the spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank you for letting me come. So now I'm going to get ready to go to my own home church this morning. So until we meet again, God bless you. Okay, so I guess I'll talk to you soon, David. Yes, yes. Yeah, we will talk soon, very soon. <laughs> God bless you. Love you so much. Yeah, love you so much, Deb. Love you so much. Oh, Reverend David. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'll, I'm going to leave now, okay? Yes. All right. Have a great day. Yes. Yeah, have a great day, too. So, okay. Bye-bye. Bye, Richard. Bye, Richard. <laughs> Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Oh,
ตัวดีมาออนไลน์มาจ้ะเนี่ยดูดิเนาะขณะนี้เสียมาหวิงหายเลยเนาะเนเน่นี่ปล่อยไปจ้ะเนาะงามันนี่เราเสียยากมันเ
ไม่ไม่ไม่ไม่ไม่ไม่ไม่ไม่ไม่ไม่ไม่ไม่ไม่ไม่ไม่ไม่ไม่ไม่ไม่ไม่ไม่ไม่ไม่ไม่ไม่